All right, today we're going to have episode six of the Facebook 5.3. Uh, we're going to get the crank in. We're going to set the thrust. Uh, we're going to do the rods, pistons. We'll check the ring gap and load all of that and try to get the whole rotating assembly in the block on this episode. Stay tuned. All right, so the, the bearings are still loaded from when from the last episode when we checked all the bearing clearances and the crankshaft, uh, I cleaned it this morning and brushed all the oil galleries. So we use, most of the time, this is the assembly lube that we use. I really like it and it smells nice, kind of like cherry mint, sort of, uh, that like definitely. Yeah, a cherry Christmas tree, that's it. So obviously that's worth like three or four horsepower, no doubt. So just a little bit on the bearings. And we always try to get a little bit down here on our thrust faces. And then we will grab our crankshaft. And we will ease her home. A little bit on the caps. So to start with, we're just going to make sure they all just crack loose so we can do our first torque. So the first round is 15 degrees, and then we do our angles.
All right, so before we do uh, the angles, so it turns really good. So we we have to set, so the, the center cap has the thrust and it's not uh, doweled. There, there is nothing to locate the cap. So this cap could be forward or reverse of the bottom half thrust bearing. So we have to line those two up. And the best way I found to do that is we take a large sledgehammer. No, I'm just kidding. So we take a dead blow and th th it's most critical for this side of the thrust to have alignment. So what we do is we drive the crank to the rear and then we drive the crank to the front to align these two halves. And, and you can see like a lot of times you just stick it in like this, check the thrust, you'll have no thrust or really low thrust. And then after you seat the center cap, the thrust will be in the normal spec. So I, you know, I see that on a lot of stuff pretty regular, but usually it just takes just a couple of slaps, you know, each direction. So And then pretty much that's it. And what we can do is we can put our indicator on. That's three. So I think the spec is, let me look what the spec is. All right, so the, the spec is three to eight. So we're right on the bottom of the spec. So it, it's fine. We're not gonna fool with that anymore. What we are gonna do is torque these, torque these mains. So a pro tip, is instead of leaving it turned up and trying to fight with the stand turning, I just rotate it 90 degrees and push to the ground and it makes life so much easier. If you will, mark them one stripe. One, uh, uh, we, got, we got it on uh, 80 degrees for our inner bolts. And we always, every time we do them, we put a stripe. So that way we know that the angle's done. Fifty-one instead of eighty. I'm struggling with my buttons over here. So, oh yeah, man, that feels nice. 
so we will check the thrust one more time just as a precaution. Yeah, we're still sitting on three. So that's that. So now we're going to get all the rods and pistons out and we'll get ready to assemble the, the rods and the sub assemblies and then we'll start dropping them in. All right, so we got all the connecting rods laid out. All the pistons are laid out. Uh, we got the rings, all the bearings. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to load all the bearings in the rods and then we're going to load the rods onto the pistons. Well, then, we'll put the, then we'll check the ring gap and confirm it's good and then we'll load the, uh, the rings onto the pistons. So generally the way I do it is I'll just lay all the rods out, break all the caps loose so it's ready and then we'll load one at a time and then just move on like that. So. One thing to remember on these are uh, King SIs and I even think the new Kings are not uh, like that but I know uh, a lot of the race bearings, the Clevites, and uh, used to, I, I think they changed them, but used to, even the XP Kings were that way, there is an upper and a lower half because the bearing is offset to clear the, uh, the large radius in a um, performance crank. So be, be aware of that or it'll cause you to have a bad day. And we use uh, CMD extreme pressure on all our bolts. You can use oil or ARP lube, whatever suits you, but we, we just find this stuff works better. You want it on the threads and on the head where the, you know, the friction's actually happening. So what I generally do, get in there, is I'll take just, and again, it don't matter, but just the, 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 the something for me to remember. So I'll put the pin in and you can see the lock groove just as a backup 
and we'll we'll grab our lock and that way the pin's in there and it won't let it go anywhere and then we can throw it down on the table two or three times get in there and i'll just load all the locks on one side and all the pistons so that way that's that's done and i always put it on the opposite of the dot not that it really matters but that's just generally the way i do it So we always want to put um, some assembly lube in the wristband bushing because it only gets oil from just splash lubrication. So we want to make sure that it's, it's good. And let's we'll see. All right, so we got our dot to the front and the dot, the dimple in the rod goes to the front. So that way there's, there's no confusion and both banks go, the dot on the rod goes to the front. Unlike, you know, cause that's, uh, what you call it? The, um, the you know, the, the, the bearing is offset in, in a standard Chevrolet, but not in a LS. So they, they all go the same direction. And these are uh, NPR pistons. We sell uh, on our website. We sell a NPR piston and ring kit. It's super nice stuff for, you know, stock rebuilds or, or mild performance stuff. I mean, I wouldn't put no nitrous or nothing on it, but just for street hot rods, we do them all the time. It's a great piston. You can see the part number and all. So there's all our pistons. We got our rings. And these are NPRs made in Japan. NPR is an OE manufacturer. They make rings for um, Toyota, uh, Ford, Chrysler. So a, a bunch of the OEMs, and, and there's more, but a bunch of the OEMs they make rings for. So we've been using NPR rings for a long, long, long time. Another tip, if you ever get confused, and, and this pretty much holds true on all the late model stuff, the newer stuff, I mean the old stuff is, is a little different. So if you'll look, 
so you can if you ever get the rings confused so this is the second ring this is the top ring and you can always tell because the top ring is shiny so the top ring has uh, molly embedded in the face and that's why it's it's shiny so the black rings are always the second the shiny rings are always the top and most now uh like these are actually i don't know if you can see that these are actually napier rings so they have a hook and always the hook goes down and usually the writing goes up so that'll make that and the top ring other than an internal chamfer some like the older hastings they had a uh, a chamfer and these actually have writing right there so you know that you know if you're going to put one direction up but the the top ring is a uh, is a barrel face so it's like a radius so this side doesn't matter i mean it could go either way but sometimes they put a, a really large chamfer on the inside to help with uh, ring expansion under compression to push it out to the cylinder wall. So, you know, just make sure you look at your instructions, you know, or look for the chamfers and make sure which way goes what. All right, let's check some ring gaps here. Usually there's never an issue. They're always fine, but we don't, we don't never leave anything to chance. So we'll put it, we'll put it in and then we'll take a piston just so we can square it. We'll take a piston and get it about halfway down in there. And I mean, I can see we got plenty of gap, but we're going to check it with a feeler gauge just to make sure, but I can see that it's, it's not tight. And the big deal is tight. I mean, a lot of people are worried to death about three or four thousandths loose, but it, it just don't matter. For the most part, it just don't matter. All right, so that's, that's roughly 19 on the second ring, which is definitely more than we need, but it's not an issue. I mean, this thing would probably run with 14 or 15 on an NA deal. Let's see. All right, so. Yep, so that top one's 13. Check another one. Make sure we're consistent. But that's closer to where it should be. You know, like most four inch bore stuff with big rings like 564, you know, we'd run that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, that one's loose 13. So, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we'd run it 15, 16 on four inch bore with big old 564th rings. So, <clears throat> so that's good. All right, I'm gonna show you how I load rings. Everybody's got a different deal, but I'm gonna show you what I do. All right. So I always find my split. And I put my split in line with the wrist pin. And you can see the two blue paint marks. That's the end of the split. And then what I'll do is I take my rail support. I start at the bottom. And I'm going to put one here on this side of the split. 
and the other gap 180 degrees on the other side. So I just hang it in like that, walk it around, spin it around 180 degrees, walk it around, it's on. Now I'm going to load all of that ring until I get all of those done and then I'll start with the next ring and work my way around like that. And that way when I get to the end, I know I ain't got no rings left. I know I'll put all my rings on one at a time because it don't never fail. You know, you're in the middle of stacking rings and a phone call or somebody walks in and you stop and then you go back and look and you didn't put on all the upper rings and one of the rail supports is not on or something and it can, uh, it can get sketchy. So I just try to make sure I focus on what I'm doing because we don't want to have no mistakes. So, the, I mean, well, I don't know if it's a trick, but the trick is hang it like you just let it twist and hang it in the groove and then literally just walk it around and then it's, it's in the groove. And uh, really thick rings on big pistons, you know, like a big block forward or something old, uh, you can... You can break that stuff if you ain't careful, but this little thin stuff, it's, I ain't broke a ring. Watch me break one today, but I ain't broke a ring and I couldn't tell you. I mean, it's, it's been a long time. Stack our top rings, exact same thing. Just put your writing up, dot up, whatever it's got. And we'll talk about ring gap placement before we start loading them in the engine. All right, so that is that. I'm just getting things organized. So what I'll do first is we'll go ahead and uh, put assembly lube in all of the bearings. That way that's done. And then we'll oil up our pistons and then we'll start loading them in the bores. So I have, everybody's got their own way of doing things, but you can stay over, just point it at me. But I use uh, automatic transmission fluid 
on the cylinders and pistons. And, uh, you know, trans fluid's a detergent. And when it burns, it don't make carbon so bad. And I, I feel like it does some justice as far as helping the rings scrub in. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have any real data, but it's one of them old NASCAR secrets. We, we used to buy some junk from a, some NASCAR guys back in the day and one of the engine builders, that's what, he, he said that's what they use uh, is transmission fluid. So I tried it and uh, I, haven't, I haven't had any negatives. So we just keep on doing it. And, uh, but they, they's all kind of, I mean, you can just use motor oil, whatever you want to use, but I use transmission fluid. All right, also, so this, this little jewel right here, to me, especially putting engines together by yourself, because I, I have to do this stuff by myself a lot. It just makes it so much easier. So, and eventually, I mean, I got a thousand things we need to be making and selling, but you know, unfortunately there's one of me and I got a million ideas and we just don't never get there. So half inch piece of aluminum, solid round bar, uh, just machine a nice little taper on the end, take a junk rod bolt, uh, knock the head off of it and drill the end of that piece of tubing um, with a P drill, the letter P. And literally you can stand it up on the table and take a hammer and tap that, bro that rod bolt you cut off in it. And now you've got this right here. So when you slide it in the bore, this will just hold the bearing in. It just hangs over the bearing to help hold it in the cylinder. And now that'll lay on the crankshaft and you don't have to worry about dinging up the crankshaft with, you know, the end of the rod or whatever. It works like a champ. I got them for multiple applications. So ring gap placement. So what I do, what I have been doing for 30 years, and it ain't never let me down, I put one of them in line with the wrist pin on this side, one of them in line with the wrist pin on the other side, and I'm done. I don't think about it. I don't worry about it. The rings rotate in the cylinders. Uh, they're not going to stop rotating. You know, it don't matter where you put them. That ain't where they're going to stay. So, you know, don't get don't get upset about, about, about the ring gap. Just make them be apart. And if you get them apart, that's, that's good enough. And we use these fixed uh, ring squeezers. I think they're just, for the money they cost, uh, it, it's just almost a no-brainer to, to not use them. I mean, you can use, you know, band squeezers if you want to, but it's just hard to beat this. All right, so, you know, it, it's loaded up, a little bit of skirts hanging out. We'll slide it in the bore. I guess we'll get our crank turned the right way. We'll slide it in the bore and it'll just, it'll just go right over to the crank. And then now you got a little handle to hold on to. And let me get a little dead blow. And if you hold your mouth right, generally speaking, you can, you can just literally just about push it in like that and the hammer will catch it. So nothing's falling in the floor. And then you can just take right here, pull it right on, unscrew it. And it don't, it don't need to be, it needs to be all the way down. I didn't press it far enough down when I made this tool, but you just don't need much thread, three or four threads in there, just enough to grab it. And that's all you need. And we'll snap a cap on. And just hold it up our square so it ain't 
cockeyed, you know. You don't want to. And you ain't trying to impact them. You're just trying to run it up there. That's all you want to do. And always, you know, make sure everybody's smooth and sliding. And, you know, I mean, I, and probably up to three or four of them, I'd be able to turn it over by hand because these little rings ain't got no tension. No tension. And we in the hole, we'll check it, but we in the hole, but we ain't in the hole much. All right, continuing on. I lost my cameraman. He had to go somewhere, so. It's just you and me. But that's all right, we're gonna, we're gonna make it through. We got three more pistons to load up and then we'll get them torqued. We, we already got the mains, so we just have to torque the rods and that's probably all I'm gonna do on this one. We'll call it a call it a day. Sweet tea, <clears throat> the drink of champions. <clears throat> Gotta have about four or five glasses of sweet tea a day to keep functioning. Get all my torquing hardware. Well, I gotta find my torque wrench. All right, so um, fifteen. So they all get fifteen pounds. sure these are 85 degrees let me find my sheet pretty sure to 85 degrees I do is I just make a mark 
kind of like we did on the rods. I just make a mark on the, I mean, like we did on the mains, on the rods. That way I know that I know that I've done them. Check. Let me find my depth gauge, and we'll check the uh, the piston protrusion. Get over here. So that's five, five in the hole. So that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that will conclude the rotating assembly. Um, I'm sure the next episode we'll get the uh, we'll get the cam in and start uh, buttoning up the bottom end. Probably get. Cam and the pump in, the pan, the both covers, and get the lifters loaded, uh, I'm sure. The the LS9 Nightmare, it is finished, honed, and washed. So be looking out for the next video in that series. I'm pretty sure we'll probably balance the rotating assembly. So that'll be good because the... Uh, the crank had a bunch of Mallory in it and it looked like a lot. So it's hard to say, but I think that it's probably going to need a lot of work, but maybe not. Maybe we'll get lucky. Um, also, 10, 000, when we get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a hoodie and a t-shirt uh, and we'll, we'll do a video on it for the drawing and we, we, I finally, my my IT guru, he finally figured out like a ran random uh, drawing software that we can attach to the video. So when we get to 10,000, uh, we'll do a video and then you'll comment on that video. And um, I don't know, there'll be some kind of keyword, I don't know, but there'll be a keyword you'll comment and then there'll be a random drawing like a week later or two weeks later. So keep your eye out for that. Um, again, the channel's growing like crazy, man. We really appreciate it. People, people call all the time and just thank us for for doing these videos. And you know, you wonder sometimes, you know, if if it's helpful, if if people are enjoying it. But apparently, you are, because the 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 subscribers keep growing uh the likes and the comments keep coming and we really appreciate it man we really appreciate it but i enjoy doing this stuff this is what i've been doing since i was knee high to a grasshopper um i want to keep doing it so you keep commenting you keep liking and i'm gonna keep doing this on video and we'll keep making videos and putting content out and you know like i've said before um, you know, stuff that you want to see, uh, I mean, tell me, let me know, send me an email, put it in the comments, uh, message us on the website. Uh, you know, we, we happy to add, I mean, obviously content that we do, you know, we was thinking about it. Uh, my, my IT guy was like, man, you know, you, there's so, so many other things you do. You need to start incorporating that. I mean, we, not lately, just because we've been so overwhelmed with all of this, but we do some fabrication. Uh, we do, you know, welding stuff. Um, just, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. So, you know, if that's stuff that people possibly are interested in as we get those kind of jobs, you know, we'll, we'll start adding that kind of content if, if that's something that interests people. But anyway, all right, I'm going to wrap this one up. 
thank you again so much for watching. Uh, you know, be on the on the lookout for the, once we hit ten thousand, be on the lookout for that video because it's coming. And like I say, we're gonna give we're gonna give away some hoodies and some shirts. And I don't know if we're gonna do it at fifteen thousand, maybe uh, or twenty thousand. But at some interval, I'm gonna give away a custom ground camshaft and maybe do a package, cam, lifters, uh, push rods, bow spring kit, and, uh, and we just, we'll do a whole package and we're gonna give it away to some lucky viewer. Stay tuned, we appreciate you so much.